We're seeing more of the industry embrace supplier diversity lists to support diverse owned businesses or those with a diversity focus. But I've also heard that these can end up putting limitations on the work that tech or ad partners have access to and can often amount to very small budget work. From your experience, have you identified any challenges or limitations in supplier diversity lists? Supplier diversity lists are doing exactly what you think they're doing, which is putting some of these partners in a box. And while it could be good to pinpoint uh, strong attributes or benefits they can bring to a brand's business, it can also prevent brands from looking at a holistic solution that can be developed with some of these diverse suppliers. How do we build a more long tail, deep relationship with some of these media partners that are focused on things like how can we identify and build towards incremental audiences together? How can we look at new forms of measurement that satisfy more than a need outside of the reach and efficiency mindset many brands tend to come back to? We also look to understand how outside of just sheer media investment to driving inventory, that investment can be used to drive a more equitable and representative ecosystem. So that also includes production. That includes creators that could be leveraged in campaigns, people behind the camera of those campaigns, and the list goes on. How can supplier diversity lists be set up in a more equitable, sustainable manner? I'm a believer in partnerships. If companies, especially ones that are working with supplier diversity, think of that as a relationship and as a, I am going to invest in this partnership, meaning I'm gonna give this partnership time to develop, I'm gonna give it time to mature, I'm gonna help and support and be a good partner, um, then I think you're gonna see that growth um, actually occur and you're gonna be able to build up a good partner network. I'd be remiss if I didn't acknowledge that supplier diversity lists as they stand today, they serve a great goal, but they can also be quite limiting, especially for global brands that are operating outside of the US. Many governments around the world actually prevent owners to share this type of information in a public setting because it can lead to bias or unintended exclusion. So in order to streamline that and ensure these types of approaches are sustainable, we've got to go a lot further than the list. So something we work off from the agency perspective is providing that list, but then ensuring we're providing ways in for every single partner on that list. One thing we do every year is an upfront whereby we bring all of our clients and about 150 diverse suppliers to meet over a three-day seminar workshop, if you will. And it's all about exploring the need states of the others and how they can create mutually exclusive uh, relationships that go a lot broader than just investing in a partner because they're black owned and they're going to help your quota. So supply path optimization has been heralded as a tool to improve various aspects of the ad industry, including being more considerate about the partners that advertisers work with. What are the opportunities, but also the dangers of this? Companies are always looking to streamline and that's, that's the nature of business. However, I think that should be for established partners. And that means a couple of years where both sides can try to figure out how do you optimize the, the path. I firmly believe there are always new partners, new publishers, new relationships, new companies that are being created that you will find yourself um, as a larger brand or a larger agency cut out of the equation if you have such a monolithic view towards SPO. You always have to have a certain allocation of budget for discovery. Many brands and agencies enter into this conversation with an emphasis on audiences and how you can optimize more towards people-based outcomes rather than the proxies we've all been historically optimizing towards. I would say the downside of that type of approach, especially when we're talking about diverse suppliers, is it means we fall into old habits as it pertains to measurement. If we think of the major media companies that are taking up lion shares of many brands overall media mix or investment, they tend to be tried and true players that have established themselves over a long period of time to be able to drive very cost efficient reach and very manageable frequency. When you talk about uh, these new partners where many of them have been in the space for one to three to five years, and we're comparing them to partners that have had 
20, 30 years to figure out what's the right way to demonstrate effectiveness, it's not really a fair comparison. Are there any other tools that the industry can embrace to improve supply chain diversity? I would say it's less about a tool and maybe a change in philosophy that one, it's something that there is going to be a constant commitment to, but that really needs to be paired second with an accountability framework that is shared transparently.